how many of you are blissfully situated uh, in Krishna consciousness? Yes, material nature is a place of suffering and Krishna consciousness is meant to take us to the region of ecstasy. Not only happiness, but the region of joy. When you consider suffering, we actually cause, we actually create our own suffering. What is this material nature? Material nature is the place that Krishna created for those who wanted to reject Krishna and be on their own. Originally, Krishna is the supreme controller. He is controlling everyone. The spiritual world is the world where everyone accepts Krishna's control. Everyone accepts Krishna as the supreme proprietor and the supreme controller, supreme maintainer. And the basis of that attitude is surrender. Mm. Therefore, in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna suggested Sarva Dharman Parittaja Mamikam Sharanam Braja. Just surrender unto me. And because that is the very foundation of spiritual situation. In order to surrender, we have to accept Krishna's authority. In order to accept, Krishna, accept Krishna's authority, we have to recognize that He is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So, <clears throat> when we reject Krishna, hmm, and we want to become Krishna ourselves. When we reject Krishna and we want to become the controllers and enjoyer ourselves, then Krishna says, okay. <coughs> in here, in the spiritual world, that is not going to happen. Therefore, for you, I will create another world. And that is this material nature. Here, aren't we considering ourselves to be the supreme controller? Aren't we considering ourselves to be the supreme enjoyer? Aren't we considering ourselves to, the, to be the supreme proprietor? And the result is, the more we develop that attitude, the more we suffer. That's why this material nature is considered to be a place of suffering. The more you try to control, the more you try, more you try to enjoy, what will be the outcome the, of that? What will be the natural consequence of that? Suffering. suffering. Mm. On the other hand, even here, if we surrender to Krishna, then the whole scenario actually changes. Then, uh, no more suffering. Therefore, Krishna is saying, Ahantvan sarva papibhyo. Sarva papibhyo. Why Krishna is saying sarva papibhyo? Because pap or sinful activities, sinful reactions are the cause of our suffering. So if there is no pap, there won't be any suffering. Therefore Krishna is saying, 
I will deliver you from all your sinful reactions. That means there won't be any suffering for you. So we can see surrender to Krishna means uh, cessation of suffering. Surrender to Krishna means entrance to the world of joy. So since this point came up, suffering, I thought of reminding you of that. And at the same time, I also wanted to remind you that actually you, your life can become full of joy. Only thing is that you have to surrender to Krishna. Then the consideration is that if I surrender to Krishna, then is it that there won't be any suffering? <clears throat> no, in the material platform, sufferings may come. Mm. We find that the devotees are also subjected to different types of painful situations. But the thing is that those painful situations don't affect the devotee. Because the devotee has transcended the platform where those painful activities are taking place. <laughs> Meaning, uh, all these painful activities are taking place on the bodily platform. Mm, in, part, in relation to the body. But, mm, when one transcends the bodily platform and becomes situated in a spiritual identity, then those sufferings don't affect them. And so it's again, it's a matter of, you know, to what extent we have been detached from the bodily, bodily body consciousness, and become situated in our spiritual consciousness. It is to that degree will be affected by the pleasure and pain of this material nature. And when you become fully situated on the spiritual platform, then all these suffering conditions only actually matter. The other day I was telling somebody that I give so many lectures on how this body is a <clears throat> instrument for receiving pain. Now I'm practically experiencing it. I'm seeing the how I have got a kind of a ailment which causes acute pain. It's called shingles. And I was seeing that uh, how uh, this body actually is a wonderful instrument for receiving pain. When you speak, that is one thing. When you experience it, then it's another thing. But at the same time, I f also feel happy that I'm not being uh, too much affected by that. Uh, I'm traveling. Doctor told me, uh, one doctor in Calcutta told me that I should take complete rest for two, three weeks. And all the devotees forced me to cancel all the tra all the programs. Like I was, so I accepted it. Like I was supposed to go to Bangladesh for three days, and I canceled that program. And I was just, and also then after that I was supposed to go to Singapore. I was supposed to go to Malaysia. Then I was supposed to come to Af South Africa. And. So I subjected myself, I thought, okay, because I was also quite exhausted after the GBC meeting. Right after the, at, towards the end of the GBC meeting, I got the shingles. And then I had some other meetings in Mayapur, like Mayapur Executive Bodies meeting and so forth. And so it was in spite of the pain, I kind of carried on. And then I was ready to go to Bangladesh. So at that time, when I, when I was told that I shouldn't travel, I thought, okay, fine. It's uh, nice to have a little uh, relief from <laughs> this hectic schedule. And then for three days, I stayed in, after staying in Calcutta for three days, I just got completely bored. <laughs> like, for how long you can lie in bed and sit around? So I decided that I'll just continue with my 
uh, program. <clears throat> and I'm doing that and I guess I'm still alive. <laughs> and so and I could take this, I must admit, because at least theoretically I know that I am not this body. This painful situation is pertaining to the body and and Krishna says tolerate it. <laughs> so and Jagadananda was asking how many doctors had seen me. I just, I didn't even remember who saw which doctor. <laughs> then <laughs> Krishna Kishore reminded me that uh, one of my disciples in Calcutta actually treated me. And she's the one who insisted that I stop traveling. I was in consultation with different doctors. I was consultation in consultation with Jagadananda also I was taking his advice and so mm -hmm, that is how we have to carry on things will happen difficulties will come but uh, they'll come and they'll go like just <coughs> as Krishna said and uh, <clears throat> the happiness and distress, uh, they will uh, come, but they are uh, temporary. Mm. They are temporary. Happiness is temporary. Distress is also temporary. It's not going to last forever. So, <clears throat> we always remember that this, it's very important that you practice this process. The process is very simple. Uh, transcend the bodily platform and come to the spiritual platform. Transcend mm, the bodily platform by surrendering to Krishna. And surrendering to Krishna means using the body in serving Krishna. Using the body in serving Krishna's mission. Mm, Prabhupada's mission. Prabhupada wants us to preach. So, to whatever extent we can, we should go out and preach. One of the main reasons why I came to South Africa this time is because there is a program tomorrow the title of the program Shri Hari is History of Historic Healing. Huh? Historic healing. Say it louder. I think it says Historic Healing on the invitation. Mm, no, no. D d racial discrimination, actually. Is Anuradha there? Oh, I think they're working on that, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, whatever it is, it's a ma to deal with racial discrimination. Mm. But the title of the program is Healing Historic Divisions. Oh, right. oh Healing Historic Divisions, yeah. Towards Racial Harmony. Right? Towards Racial Harmony. Yeah, Healing Historic Division towards uh, Racial Harmony. <coughs> we are discussing about that and one devotee actually wanted to meet me and uh, so he was co he contacted Hemanga and uh, Hemanga couldn't actually give him any time because there was no time actually today and then he wrote to me it's a very well-meaning devotee and the basis, the, the essence of what he was saying is that in our temples there is acute racial discrimination. 
I was aware of that also because one, some devotees, some black-bodied devotees also complained to me. And it is not just the temple devotees, this attitude is also being harbored or displayed even by our congregation. Like, uh, and he actually warned me, that's why I say that he's actually well-meaning, because his concern was that if in that meeting, in, if in that conference, somebody points out that you are speaking about racial harmony, but your own institution there is such acute racial discrimination. Then where do we stand? Mm. So <clears throat> anyway, we are trying to we are discussing about that. And in that respect today I'll be very frank and I will tell you all something. And I will expect that as your spiritual master you will take these instructions to heart. Mm. Charity begins at home. Mm. I may not be able to change the entire South Africa, but I may try to change the attitude of a group that are actually close to me, that are willing to listen to me. I will start with one experience I had. Once I was talking to one minister from Mauritius and he was telling me the attitude that he noticed during a flight from Mauritius to South Africa of certain Indian gentleman towards the black passenger who was sitting next to him. That was a long time ago, not recently. And he made, he's a very, you know, he's a minister. He was, uh, you know, coming from a very cultured background. He was educated in England. And so he at that time actually made one statement that the Indians are the worst snobs. Uh, that's why I said that I'm being very frank with you all. And I'm speaking from my own experience. Mm. He said that the Indians are the worst snobs. Do you know what it means? Mm. Who doesn't understand what it means? <laughs> okay, everyone understands it. Uh, no? Oh, you didn't understand the word. What's the meaning of the word snob? Hmm? Snob? Haughty. Huh? Okay, haughty. What's the meaning of the word haughty? <laughs> <laughs> huh? Like who thinks that he is better than others? He is the best. Hmm? A very mm, lofty ideas about one's own self. Is that the right description of snob, Jagadananda? <laughs> <clears throat> Let's go back to India. Mm. You know the caste system in India. You know what is happening there. High class people treat the low class people, the same race, speak the same language, coming from the same culture, you know, but they treat the low class, lower class individuals in such a bad way. Like for example, a Brahmana, if some Sudra 
happened to pass by him and his shadow touched him, he would go and take bath. So this is there in India's, you know, deep-rooted so-called Indian culture. So, mm, I don't know the attitude of the Indians towards the Africans here so much because I don't really practically experience it so much. But I get to hear, just as today, I became aware of it through this email. Now tell me, is it right? Hmm? No. Why this kind of things happen? Why does one develop this kind of attitude? Why does one develop this kind of attitude? Hmm. Because of the body consciousness. Hmm. When you remain in the body consciousness, when you think that this body is everything, then we try to see everything in the light of this bodily designation. So that is why it is so important hmm, that we transcend the bodily platform. We have come to the platform. We have come to the platform where uh, we are meant to transcend the bodily platform. Do we, don't we theoretically understand this? Uh, don't we? I'm sure all of you are aware of that verse and you have repeated this verse, you have quoted this verse so many times. Uh, Dehi nashmin jatha dehe Komaram Jovanam Jara. Hmm? The body changes, but we do not change. Who is that we? Who is that identity? The spirit soul. So don't we recognize we are the spirit soul? Jirnani Bhashang Shri Jatha Vihaya. What is this body? The body is like an external covering, it's like a dress. Just as when the dress becomes old, we give up that dress and put on a new one. So we have to transcend the bodily platform. I'm saying huh, this, I'm speaking about this attitude. Most probably most of you don't really do that. I know many of you, the way you treat your... Huh, your African subordinates, African maids and things. I have seen like many of you treat them so nicely. Mm. I have seen, uh, I used to, I often used to stay in Jagadananda's house and I used to see how Jagadananda and Jayashri used to treat their maids like a member of the family. So it's not that all of you do that, but I'm just making this point to you because it is, I feel it's my responsibility to make you aware and develop a certain attitude. Develop a certain... What's happening? What's happening? Why are you moving around? I'm giving a lecture <coughs> and you're... There's an emergency. I'm dealing with it. Oh. So what happened? I'd rather speak. Oh. And I'm sorry about that. <coughs> So go out of your way to display that attitude, display that mm, healing attitude. Mm. Like at the same time I can also say, you see it's a natural thing that the da those who are downtrodden, they become sensitive. Little disrespect, little dis disregard, you know, gets magnified in their heart. Mm. Therefore, I'm just pointing out to you all, please go out of your way to make them feel comfortable. Like, uh, you are seeing, 
South African situation is becoming so critical. <clears throat> I mean, I, I had been forecasting it since last 30 years, <laughs> or ever since I came to South Africa. At least not, uh, not about say 25 years I have been telling that situation here is going to get worse, especially after independence. Things were quite uh, prosperous, quite nice. It was because of Nelson Mandela. Because he was a very noble person. He was a very wise person. So what he was actually saying was was very, very profound, steeped with profound wisdom. And he, as you know, he he was foreseeing in a South Africa as a rainbow nation. We also were trying to work towards that, because South Africa has such a wonderful platform. Like the South Africa is like a small world. Like uh, all the different types of people are here in South Africa. Uh, the Europeans are here, Indians are here, Chinese are here, uh, Malays are here. Uh, so all different types of people are here. And if we could make Krishna conscious a reality, unifying everybody, then this would have been such a wonderful example for the rest of the world. And with that understanding, we are trying to work towards, but unfortunately it didn't happen. But you know, like, I mean, for Krishna consciousness, South Africa is such a wonderful field. If we could unify everybody here, then we could go to the world and say, look, this is the place. Just as Prabhupada used to say that in ISKCON we are there are Christians, there are Jews, there are Hindus, there are Muslims, uh, all dif- pe- people from all different religious denominations have come, and they're living peacefully. So we could take it even further and make all different kinds of people from different colors and different creeds could get together. And Krishna Consciousness can very easily do that because our real unity, when it takes place in the platform of Spirit-Soul way, we all are equal. We all are similar. Uh, It's so easy to become united. And it is not just a sentimental thing, and it is also not just a superficial thing. It is real, because this relationship, this spiritual relationship is with Krishna in the center. With Krishna in the center, we we all are related to each other. Just as in a family with a father in the center, everybody becomes related. Similarly, with Krishna in the center, we all become related as brothers and sisters. And that is the real spiritual platform. So we have two domains, two realms, material realm, spiritual realm. When you deal with the, when we remain in the material platform, when we act with our bodily identification, the, our material identification, then uh, divisions and differences start. And it keeps growing. The more we, more materialistic we become, more divided we'll become. Because then we'll, on the bodily platform, we are seeing so many differences. 
Ultimately, I am different from all of you. Isn't it? My body is different from your bodies. And it keeps on like that. The difference according to color of the skin, difference due to language, difference due to religion, difference due to political ideology, difference due to philosophical ideology and so forth. So we become more and more divided. On the other hand, when we transcend the material platform and come to a spiritual platform, then we all become united. Because that spiritual platform is the platform where Krishna is the center and we all become related with that one particular criteria. With Krishna in this, the solution is that the real, real uh, possibility of becoming united is to put Krishna in the center. On the other hand, if we put ourselves in the center, the divisions are inevitable. In that respect, Prabhupada gave the example of when you take a handful of pebbles and throw it on a pond, each pebble will create a circle of wave. And all these waves will keep on growing. And then they'll clash with each other. On the other hand, if you throw the, all the pebbles to one center, then all those pebbles will create a circle of waves and those waves will keep on expanding but they won't clash. So who that one center be? That one center that's common to all of us is Krishna. So that's why in Krishna consciousness we have the possibility of becoming perfectly united, perfectly harmonious. Our field of activity will grow, but it won't clash, because all that we are doing is for the sake of Him. So, <clears throat> was it too heavy today? Does anybody have any anything to say? Mm -hmm. Question or comment? Yes? I should mention about uh, transcending the body. So the means of that would be tolerance. So yeah. In this process, what can be applied to uplift our thinking in terms of embracing everyone equally? Mm. You see, the best way to display that attitude is when you are dealing with somebody who is inferior to you. It's easy to embrace somebody who is equal to you or superior to you. But one who is subordinate or inferior to you, when you embrace him, that embrace becomes meaningful. Mm. And one will be able to embrace somebody only when he feels for that person. Meaning, uh, when there is love for that person. Mm. So try to give that love, recognizing that these are all Krishna's parts and parcels. And when Krishna sees that I am being kind to them, then Krishna will be happy. When Krishna sees that I am being kind to them, then Krishna will be kind to me. Any other? Okay. So think about it and see if you have, like how many of you agree with what I said? That's, that's impressive. <laughs> <laughs> 
I thought there would be heavy disagreement. <laughs> In a way, I may have sounded so. So, what should I say? Uh, so offensive. The Indians are the worst snobs. <laughs> so I am also being getting into the bodily platform. <laughs> but I am saying it because we are addressing ourselves, trying to recognize our own shortcomings, our own defects. So <clears throat> be kind to others, be compassionate towards others. Especially, as I said, those who need your help, those who need your kindness, those who need your mercy. Be nice to them. Instead of exploiting them. The material, general material tendency is to exploit. Those who are subordinate, we tend to exploit. And difficulties will be there. Like we have so many wonderful examples. We have the examples of Haridas Thakur. Uh, see how, him, how much he tolerated. We have the example of Jesus Christ. Uh, how much he tolerated for the welfare of others. Thank you all very much. Hare Krishna. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Gaur Premanande Hari Hari. Om.